one of the most frustrating things when communicating, especially if it's a conversation but meant to be a teachable moment or maybe it's a training moment and you get into the breadth of a deep conversation and somewhere along the way it gets sidetracked and it gets sidetracked because the other person keeps interrupting you. Welcome to Leading Leaders Podcast. Five minute videos, five days a week. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast. I think one of the reason people struggle with the idea of listening through a story is because the story is boring. Number one, yeah, I mean, it's just a, just a minor little thing that if your story is boring, people don't want to sit through the whole thing. And the reason the story is boring is because, well, it doesn't matter to them. It's not relevant. They don't care what you have to say. Now, that sounds mean and rude and cruel, and it really is if, number two, you have spent all of your time preparing this message, this story, this idea, this revelation that you want to share with them, only to find out they don't care. If you've come prepared to deliver a, a very powerful, emotional, moving story that to you is just heart-rending or, or absolutely enthralling, it's exciting, it's fun, it's joyous, it's jump up and down, have fun, it would be like you coming to tell me, look, I got a new car, and being really excited about you got a new car, and yay, I'm glad you got a new car, but it ain't my car, and I don't get to drive it. And it's not going to sit in my driveway or be in my garage when I open the door to look and see if it's still really there. It's your car. Then I'm excited for you, but it's your car. See, the, the challenge for many people who are communicators and storytellers, if they're good communicators, is that the stories that they've chosen to tell may be exciting to them. They may be emotional to them. They may be of high value to them. They may be truly important to them, but what they've missed is, why should the audience care? And, and so one of the little factors that rolls into that, the way that that expresses itself in communication, is that sometimes what you think is the story actually contains within it several little tiny stories. And some of those tiny stories are more relevant to your audience. Sometimes what you thought was a detail to embellish the story that you're telling, that's really the part that strikes the curiosity of your audience. If you take the time to craft your stories, your vignettes, your anecdotes, in such a way that each one of them kind of carries its own little bundle of call to action, its own little bundle of lesson, its own little bundle of emotional connecting words, its own little bundle of psychology and historicity and future casting. Within that one little vignette, then what you'll learn is that you've got the power to have as much of a conversation, as much of a teaching point at the cash register or the gas pump as you do in a 45 minute teaching or a 20 minute keynote. For many people, the idea of crafting a speech is to take one story and break it up into, into several bits and to align the phases of that story, whether it's chronologically or the learning lesson of that story, and try to put points within that story. Uh, you better be really, really masterful. And it better be that the story as a whole is so profoundly connective to a culture or a group of people that you can use it within that niche. Maybe some of the stories, the longer stories of being in the fire academy or, or the longer stories of parenthood or the, the longer stories that, that walk through a phase of life that someone would look at and go, I walked through that same season and I had all 15 of those little incidences in my life as well. It, the more of those you can parallel, the better. And that's the reason that I think if we work with smaller vignettes and smaller instances and smaller incidences, it's a whole lot easier to connect with a particular niche. Even if like spokes in a wheel, you need 30 of those in order to cover the massive audience in front of you. Your blog, your podcast, the video that you're being interviewed for, or the stage that you're standing on. When you realize that two people makes three audiences and 20 people makes 40 audiences and so on and so on, you've got to be prepared to reach each of them 
with their need. And if your overall story takes them down a path that causes them to divert their attention from the story, from the call to action, from the end result that you're looking for, because each detail of your story causes them to want to get into conversation with you. It's great that your details are that intriguing, but what it might be telling you is that you should spend more time talking about the story of that detail, making that a call to action, making that a teaching point, allowing that to have the connecting words of both historic experience and future casting hope, because that is where your audience resonates. The Story Power Masterclass is a really good tool for learning those kinds of things about your story because it's really easy to drone on and have people go, why are they still talking? And it's real easy for people to have an argument going on in their head because they're still thinking about that one point that you made like eight minutes ago with that one little tiny story from within your story. If you're curious about that, just go to jlaurenorris.com slash storypower. There's a whole lot of free video on there and a little bit of explanation about what the next class is all about. Love to see you there. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast for Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day. Subscribe now for our extensive video library of leadership lessons promoting faith, family, and freedom.